So I want to go back, uh, you know, many years to your earlier days in Formula One and the transformative uh, Concord Agreement that really uh, propelled Formula One into mm -hmm. the massive success that it is today. Um, predating that Concord Agreement, I mean, yeah, the, the teams would have to negotiate with each individual promoter. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you couldn't guarantee that all the teams were gonna race in every no. race. And, absolutely. Um, how much did that change? The Concord Agreement was a, a sort of peace treaty mm -hmm. with the former FIA. Right. Where we agreed that our group, me if you like, would be looking after all commercial matters and the FIA would look after all the sporting matters. It started really because I bought the Brabham Company. Mm -hmm. um, and then they asked me, to, if I would sort of negotiate things, because nobody negotiated for the teams, they negotiated with the promoters directly, and the promoters took advantage if somebody needed the points, you know, as the, even Ferrari, to win the championship. They used to get less money to start the race and things like that. <clears throat> Which I thought, well, probably we can do better than that. You know, there was no, nobody cared. Basically, that's the whole. I mean, what they wanted to do originally is to pay me a, pers a percentage to run things, which didn't make a lot of difference one way or the other, um, because it was never very clear. And then I got to the state, I said, listen, we ought to start doing things a little bit more serious. Let's form a company, all put money in the company. I'll run the company complete, if that's what you want, or somebody else can run it, if you like and take 30% of profits at the end of the, the year. And they were, and people said, no, 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 you get on, you do what you like, we just want to race. You do the best for us and yourself. And that was it. And isn't that funny because, you know, in recent years, people were almost critical of you for that percentage yeah. that you were taking when um, in reality it was very kind of started as a very casual conversation back in the day. Those were people that ran businesses and knew what they were doing. And they just was happy for that to happen because we made things happen, whereas they wasn't happening. Well, so it was good for everybody. And what did you start to make happen early on that you could begin to feel the momentum and traction? Well, the making sport sure was all the teams, up? firstly, got paid. So when we agreed deals, it was to make sure that the promoters paid us and I paid the teams. And I think over the course of a decade, driver salaries go up five and six times what they were a decade earlier. Um, in what ways were you immediately seeing an improvement in your business? I mean, I think what was good was the fact that we sort of captured all the television. Because it, first, there was never, ever a set time for a race. They told more or less start. I remember in Mexico one year, we started when people got there, more or less, <laughs> which was crazy. So the first thing we've got to do is to make sure, which we did, races start on time, to the minute. So slowly, we got a lot more, all the t TV people worldwide on board with us before they used to be able to, if they wanted to broadcast the race, they would, if they didn't, they didn't. So I made them originate all the races and broadcast all the races. 